Greetings and salutations, all you lovely individuals. It is League Unlocked. We are back here and Mark with you beauties. And we got LCK action in full swing. And apparently, somehow, people might have overreacted just a little bit by Top Esports 2-0-ing Gen G. The Golden Road is dead. These guys are choking already. I don't know why people want Gen G to suffer and not be good, but back in the LCK, a little bit of home cooking, and oh, they just continue their crusade. 7-0, and zero, another 2-0, still looking like an absolutely lethal, terrifying machine. Uh, unfortunately, there's too many people out there that have been burned by the Gen G dream machine before that they're not ready to trust in what has been a proven product in this iteration of Gen G this year around and what they've been able to do. It's wild, and it is unfortunate because you're missing out on a pretty darn fun and successful ride continuing tonight with Gen G taking on through uh, the Kwong Dong Freaks. And we were ready. KDF, let's see you against the best of the best. Not quite ready. They'll have to return to the tourney one. They've leveled up a little bit. Uh, today it was all about Canyon woke up. He said, I want to play tanks. I want to camp for Keen because he's playing back-to-back -back carries in the Jace and the Gangplank, which, listen, playing top lane carries like that is not the flavor of the month right now, but poor old doo-doo. If I'm him, I'm taking a few days off from playing League of Legends because he could not do anything in either of these games on the croc. I don't want anything to do with Tenji at that point if I'm doo-doo and I'm experiencing that type of pain throughout the games that we had today. You laid it out, Canyon picking the Sejuani for both games one and two. I think a relatively conservative, stable, standard pick compared to what we have seen him be free to pick from the ranch of all the junglers that he could ever want to play. I think he must be saving some pocket picks for a, a hot upcoming match in, in the schedule because he looked fantastic. He looked like he was facilitating all the things that we know that he can do. And really... He made it a nightmare to deal with Mr. Keen in the top side. He helped set him up, and once he was set up, the gold machine was born for Mr. Gen G. Maybe Canyon is, it's its like building up karma with the coaching staff. He's like, look, two games of Sejuani, that nets me a random Kane game in the middle of the split, right? He's just building up that repertoire uh, and that back and forth with the coaching staff. That's the only way I can explain it, because he was actually having fun playing Sejuani in these games. He's smiling. I, 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 had a, I had a tutor back in the day trying to get me to do better in math, and one of their incentives was, hey, if we do this little drill, I'm gonna give you this gold star. You can exchange a couple of these gold stars at the end of the session. I'll give you a dollar store, a, a toy or something stupid like that. Just a little treat, a little incentive. I'm buying in on that for Gen G with Canyon playing the Sejuani games, giving that stability in what we expected to be a relatively hot match. A Gen G that people were thinking was on a little bit of a downslide, maybe questioning it after the EWC, and then a KDF that was pretty much as hot as it got in the LCK and proving that they were building up that steam to challenge the top level teams of the LCK. I think the problem here is that, well, top level teams of the LCK, sure, maybe they didn't have their sights set on the very tippity top of the LCK teams, which Gen G firmly still is. Yeah, and you know that's the case when quietly both Chovy and Paze go deathless in this series, and it feels like this series wasn't even about them. Chovy had some disgusting CS leads in back-to-back -back quirky games. Pays had some ludicrous backline dives on the Kaisa, but first and foremost, you're talking about the top side. That's just how terrifying Genji is. And that's what grabbed your attention. That's what was all these things. But you're right, Pays, Chovy, every time they check back in on those lanes, you had a bigger advantage for those guys. And you're like, we didn't really miss all that much. We just kind of took a detour top side or whatever happened. And all of a sudden, you've got these kills. You've got this advantage of CS. Chovy picking up the CS pays. So, so this is the most invisible 6-0 and 3, 6-0 and 4 ADC that you could ever see because he was certainly there. The damage was there whenever they needed it. But he almost felt like he didn't matter because of the advantages gained by Keen in the top side, by Canyon getting things rolling. That's just how good Gen G are.
Yeah, 29 to 8 in kills across the series, 20 to 4 in turrets, pure domination as we're so accustomed to seeing out of Gen G. Other schedule on the docket, maybe not as dominant as Gen G, because, I mean, truthfully, not many teams on the planet are right now, but the D plus Kia train continues to roll, and it wasn't just Keen busting out the gangplank. We got to see it out of Kingen in the first game to similar but also different results. But hey, if this means we're seeing more and more gangplank in the meta, I'm all for it to break up the Cassante Skarner Dr. Mundo meta. I'm I'm here with it too, man. I, I think that is one of these changes that I can't believe took so long to see start to come through as one of these options. You know, a, a lot of people wanted to go for the Twisted Fate, the way that he brings in that extra gold generation, having that ability with the global ultimate. Who else has that gold generation? Who else has that global ultimate? Who else can roll into that top side and provide a different option, different angle than even Twisted Fate can offer? into that uh, matchups that you're gonna have with these top lane bullies. I love that answer from the gang, as the, uh, for the gangplank. This uh, D plus series certainly felt like going from Formula One with Gen G at the speed of light, all the way down to maybe backyard racing where it's not quite as good. There's a little mud on the tires, all these type of things. Racing and the action was still good. D plus still looking strong enough to maintain that pace in the LCK. And you know, Showmaker continues to have a resurgence, feel rejuvenated. We got a rare Akali sighting out of him, looked very comfortable on the Talia. Uh, game two, we're getting non, well, both games we didn't get AP junglers out of either squad. They were just changing the Sejuani and the Vi. And game two, it's Lucid picking up the MVP on a 9, 1, and 8 Vi performance. And remember, this rookie now is leading the league in player of the games right ahead of his old buddy Canyon, who he replaced on this D-plus squad. But uh, yeah, pretty pretty solid. It's just DRX, so we're not getting super uh, excited, but we are excited that the form D-plus has showed now for six straight series. It sets us up for an amazing matchup between these two, right in the pipeline, Gen G and D-plus Kia, and especially... Look at that jungle matchup. Just mentioning Mr. 9-0, and Lucid in this one. He was looking fantastic for the squad. And you laid out the stats. He has been fantastic for D plus Kia. I don't think necessarily he's gotten quite the love, quite the accolades for the results that he has put through, given that obviously the potential and hype was so high for him and who he was replacing in Canyon. Well, Canyon has been another level for Gen G type of option thing but when you do look at lucid it is important to recognize as you laid out those stats are absolutely for real and are damaging stats when you're on the other squad looking up for this matchup gen g d plus kia red hot in the lck it's the ultimate measuring stick now for d plus as they're sitting pretty six and one as the consensus honestly second best team right now in the lck well of course you're gonna argue team one uh, in that regard but kellen had a fantastic series both renata games in this one seeing the level up from him gives me hope that maybe this d plus bot lane can at least hold up uh in the gen g matchup since pays of lahens have been so much better but now we get to see who's the better gangplank kingen or keen you're gonna need a higher level out of kingen because now that gen g is showing that they're willing to play entire win cons through the top side for keen uh that's just another angle where gen g is gonna have an advantage uh, put put your doubloons on Keen. Put them on Keen if you're rolling through the the gangplank doubloons here as your currency. Uh, it, it's going to be a, a hard matchup. I like you know bringing up down. I think the bottom lane has got to be also one of these ones for D plus key. I don't know how you get them more involved, but aiming seems to be one of these ADCs that can have this pop off, can reach that high octane level of play that we are coming accustomed to from the Gen G bottom lane. That's going to be one of the other hot areas I would look at in this matchup. It's it's funny, the whole thing with aiming, because if you look at all his numbers and a lot of the games, he's never doing anything egregious. Stats-wise, he's one of the premier AD carries in the LCK. But yet, time and time again, we see all these resources funneled into him and people are always harping on the guy because he's not popping off hardcore carrying the games. But honestly... He's, he's that next tier of AD carries performance-wise still in the LCK behind the Goomas and the Pays of the squads. 
It's like having this unbelievably reliable and good high performance car and then handing someone the keys and then aiming just says every once in a while in a team fight, I don't need these. Just throws the keys away type of situation. That's kind of why it feels that way. I feel for aiming because he has been good. He has been steady at times for his team. But it always are these moments, these little glimpses, these little missteps, little mispositionings, you know, uh, miscalculations on, yes, I can get this guy type of thing. Those type of things come through far too often, I think, with aiming to reach that ultimate pinnacle level. That doesn't mean to underestimate what he can do and how this matchup can play into the favor of D plus Kia. And obviously going to have their hands full, as I know they lost at the World Cup, Esports World Cup. But it's still since February that Genji lost the series in the LCK. We'll see if D-Plus can uh, throw a wrench into that immaculate record in summer so far for Genji. LPL side of things, the continued growth, resurgence, not really resurgence, just surgence of anyone's legend who match up against NIP and for the third straight time in summer hand them a crushing defeat as they move now to 3 and 0 6 and 0 in game score so far to start the summer split and mark anyone's legend is firmly in there as that fourth best team in the LPL and I'm even taking arguments to put them ahead of JDG right now wow Wow, wow, wow. What a world we are in where anyone's legend has been able to put together this type of run in the LPL and this most recent one against NIP. Uh, you know, it's unfortunate because you look at NIP in this matchup and as much as much time we like to talk about fraud bowl, all these type of things. This really didn't feel like NIP were frauds in any type of sense or were all of a sudden, you know, revealed as ah, you're not as good as you, you are type of thing. It was more so just about anyone's legend really solidifying themselves and bringing themselves into the at attention zone. You're right, of people that will look at it and say, JDG, anyone's legend, and then go, what the heck is JDG doing here? It has to be anyone's legend. The numbers, the eyeball test, it's all there for this squad and what they've been able to do. And I got to say, as someone, you know, keeping track of players and things going on in the LPL, they're probably isn't a player you're more happy to see find a success like this find a ragtag group and get it together than mr shanks in the mid lane holy moly he's been doing his part that's for sure but he's getting some help from the rest of the boys and it feels good to see yeah slapping rookie down kind of two games in a row obviously the yone in the game too and t1 has now blessed the lck and lpl with this solo lane zeri that we're seeing pop up more and more but how about even guys like Croco and KL, who were bottom feeder teams on Live Sandbox in the LCK? We saw them getting tilted against matchups against T1. And now you've got Croco going 11 1 and 11 on brand, taking over games. That is a difference. Holy cow. And that's just one of those ones where get that mindset, get that different positioning, all these type of things. That talent can flourish. Absolutely. And one of these ones that we have seen. And I think. Well, uh, really for Kale is certainly one that we did notice and mention, you know, certain little bits of glimpses and talent coming through that pipeline. Never, never would I have said that we'd reach these type of heights and these type of numbers that anyone's legend has been able to put together. And the best thing is the stable, uh, how good they have looked and how much you can trust how good anyone's legend can look for a squad like anyone's legend just kind of bursting on through. Normally you don't have that type of trust. The way that they have looked, these numbers, this schedule strength they have gone through in this early part of the LPL, this is for real. Anyone's legend, book them, I'll take them over JDG. And we get that exact head-to-head -head over the weekend on Sunday. AL versus JDG to fully prove uh, that Mark and I are find the right stocks <laughs> in anyone's legend so hopefully uh maybe jdg doesn't just 2-0 them but anyone's legend hasn't shown signs that that's gonna happen they ain't slowing down they are a legit threat for a title and worlds in the summer split of the lpl next we got everybody's favorite we got a little who am i we're doing some guessing games for Mark with varying degrees of difficulty a team or player I'll read out the stats and Mark's going to try and guess what team or player they are it's it's a team centric one but we're going to start with a single player before we get into the teams and this is this is all leagues we're going to Mark not just major region every oh. tier one tier two it is a player 
who has the lowest deaths per game and the highest KDA among all players in the summer split. Who am I? I know that's not much of a hint, but it's not. But I mean, you're 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 got to be thinking who is the guy setting the world on fire? Who is being a true difference maker amongst the players? Mm. Oh, man. And, you know, you mentioning the other regions of the tiers makes me start thinking, I guess. Oh, man, it's got to be. Oh, boy. Who I could be? Mm. Well, you know, it, it's it's hard. I'll tell you, I gotta it's go. not a top layer. <laughs> okay, well, you know, I wasn't really going to pick the pool of the, the, the Skarner Cassante boys. <laughs> You know, I'm going to throw a dart in a, in a relatively safe location. I'm going to take Pays. I'm going to take Gen G. I'm, I think that they've obviously had the strength so far this back half of the summer, you know, talking about summer split and looking where Pays has been. He has stepped it up since MSI big time for Gen G. Gen G, anyone on Gen G, obviously going to be a very safe bet. But this is Mr. KDA himself at over 23. Oh, no. It's reckless. T1 Academy Reckless sitting pretty with a 23 KDA. I wasn't going to say Reckless. I'll admit <laughs> that one for sure. But there was a little twinkling that said, that start from T1 Academy, I've seen the numbers. I've seen the games. And I know that, yes, Reckless is up there. That's wild. That's wild. That you know, he, you he's going to get memed because you're expecting T1 Academy to be like 0-7, oh, but he has a great KDA. But they're actually winning. They are, and even more so, it's it's wild to see the support position get this type of one. Maybe not so much knowing Mr. Reckless, Mr. KDA's history yeah. in the past, but certainly a support rolling through with the lowest amount of deaths type of thing. That's, when does that ever happen? The support's making these engages, all these type of things, and then that's where maybe you come in with the secret asterisk of going, it's reckless support, Set so of course we're not. No, he's been playing engages and, uh, you know, going deathless he's, he's on been, Alistair. I think, I, I think it is a fair thing to say. Make that type of credit and make that quote little asterisk as well to mention that his Korean has certainly continued to improve as far as that language barrier that is there with his teammates. That is a He's racing. He's putting in the effort, no question. Very fast. So that one I want to acknowledge. And wow, that's, that is a fun one to see that coming through. There's been a lot of players having success that you might want to throw in there. But man, oh man, that's a wild one. Let's get to a bit of the ugly. This is a team. Talking about a team. Uh... All the major regions, we have the shortest game time at 27 minutes, 29 seconds. The lowest average kills at five kills per game. And the lowest towers killed at a mere 1.7 per game. They don't even get two turrets on average a game. Who am I? Okay, it, it has to be someone just absolutely abysmal this year. And unfortunately, across all the major regions... You can find one or two targets in that type of territory. But for me, it's got to be more so towards that Western side. I'm looking LEC. I'm looking LCS. And I'm feeling, well, if it's LCS, there's no question. It's your boy's Shopify Rebellion. If it is the LEC, it's got to be, you know, a team like Rogue. But I'm telling you, I, it's no question to me. It's Shopify Rebellion. They have been, for certain, the worst of the worst. He nailed it. It's absolutely Shopify. They have not only lost their games, they have gotten absolutely trounced. Five kills and 1.7 turrets averaged out. I know they have only played three series, but that's some of the worst stats you'll ever see. Uh, this one this one was unfair. This was, this was a, a too easy pick for me because not only you laid out the stats, even just bringing it up in the conversation type of area, that smell, I can smell it. The Shopify stink <laughs> down at the bottom of the LCS. Yes, siri. There's no question the worst team across those four major regions. Surely there's only up from here, right? The numbers can't get worse than that, right? Like less than a turret a game. No, no. They, maybe they'll climb out. Maybe they'll win uh, a series. Let's pivot. Now we're on the good side of, again, still teams, still major regions. This team is the only squad that is top four in these major statistical categories i'm talking kills per game they're first in gold per minute second baron percentage gold differential at 15 dragon percentage even gold differential per minute they are all top four they're the only team that's in the top four for all those who wins? i i i gotta roll gen g 
I have to roll the Gen G dice there. If I'm going to ever pick the team that has proven to be the top team in League of Legends right now, and one that is so complete and wide of the top team in League of Legends right now, I'm rolling with Gen G. There's a couple of other cool, interesting options that I'm sure maybe we'll hear about here in the LPL and LCK, but I got to be rolling with your top dogs of Gen G. Well, you're right. It's definitely an LCK or LPL team that's all in this, but it's the team we were just hyping up. <sighs> Anyone's legend. No way! Gen G is oh. in most of these, but there's a couple that are outside of the top four. It's only Anyone's legend, so yes, I test, stats test, this team's for real, man. That is crazy, and I love to hear that it is anyone's legend because uh, you bring that up and you mention that category stuff right away. I know anyone's legends up there in one. I know they're up there in maybe a second category, but to think that they're up there with that consistency of all four of them and to talk about, well, who else is in that type of consistency? Nobody. Nobody. Nobody's at that type of level of consistent greatness across their team and why they're succeeding. Not even. The MSI champions of Gen G, not even the EWC champions, T1, whatever you want to crown anybody this year, anyone's legend might be the most complete team that we have got rolling on through in the LPL. And the big asterisk is still, they've played good teams, but we haven't seen them against the top three in the LPL. So we see how these stats will change when they do match up against BLG, TES, and JDG. It's like going up a very, you know, very gradual set of stairs and all of a sudden, yeah, it's a straight vertical wall to get to the next level here is the LPL. Anyone's legend. They have earned that right to challenge that wall to take their test against the very best of the best of the LPL. So I think the only thing we can do now is set up a match Shopify versus anyone's legend. <laughs> no. let's, let's see how the stats change. I, mean, I think there's things against that in Twitch's terms of service that we can't go and show that, man. Yeah. Shopify, I mean, we need to set up a bottom of the barrel. Maybe OK Savings Bank Brion. That's the matchup. We need Shopify to prove who is actually at the bottom of the barrel for their respective squads. But uh, AL... If the highlights don't do it justice, look at the stats. This team is coming for a berth at the World Championship in the LPL. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you. Beauties, as always, thanks for hanging out. And we will catch you on that flippity flip.